this video I'm going to show you how to assemble our pocket mesh kit. It is a little bit uh, different compared to standard mo model kits you're used to. I'm going to show you. These are the packages they come in. In every package you get a um, um, sheet with assembly instructions. There's also a safety sheet. I recommend you read it because uh, 3D printed resin has some uh, different properties compared to standard uh, model kit plastics. And at the end uh, of the safety instructions, you also find this um, uh, QR code, which brings you directly to our YouTube channel where you can watch this video. So let's start with the number one kit, the Fat Boy. The parts usually come uh, packed in small plastic bags and it's wrapped with bubble wrap so the parts are uh, really safe inside the box. I just put them in loose because it would cost too much time to unpack them now on camera. So what you get here is 3D printed very sturdy resin parts. They have similar properties to the model kit plastics but uh, as I said there are some little differences. For example. Uh, the parts are printed upside down, that's why you have uh, support structures here. It's uh, comparable to a sprue or a runner on a model kit, but uh, looks very different, you will see. So, when you got out all the parts, the first thing you have to do is to remove them from the support structures and clean up residues that are left over, basically the same way like you would do with a standard model kit. So, let's start with the torso. I use this kind of hobby uh, wire cutters. It's super practical because they have a, a flat end. If you can get your hand on one of these, I encourage you to, to do it with uh, these cutters. Because you can get very close to the surface, the support structures are usually fastened on the undersides of the parts so they don't interfere with the details while printing. So, let's just start. Cut them very close to the base, as close as possible. That way you can uh, save a little time with cleaning up later on if you get a good cut angle. You don't have to necessarily cut all of them. If you have cut enough of those structures, usually some leftovers are hard, hard to reach leftovers of the support structure can be can be wiggled away like this, it just breaks off. So that is garbage. You have to get rid of that. Um, yeah, that's uh, uh, plastic leftovers. Then what I usually do is I take a, uh, a hobby knife, sharp scalpel, and just slide over the flat surfaces to get rid of the small contacts. Just uh, try to get it really flat and even, so you can check from the side. Flat. So be careful with your fingers. <laughs> the parts are very small. Um, I'm a bit um, too careless sometimes myself, but fortunately, I have hardly ever cut myself. I cut the hang of it. But yeah, be careful. If you um, want to be really safe, you could use plastic gloves, so in case you slip, that might help um, not to directly cut yourself. So, very careful, very gentle. The parts are usually quite stable, like you can see this here, this uh, uh, handlebar in front, it bends pretty well. But, yeah, just to be safe, don't be too forceful while cutting. Cut carefully, slowly, gently. So, I'm just going to continue uh, releasing the parts. Oh, uh, one more thing. If you want to re make really sure you get flat surfaces, you can use this um, um, sanding paper sticks. You usually can get them at your hobby supply store or um, um, from 
uh, this, uh, I think it's the same that people in the nail studios are using. So if you want to make really sure you have flat surface, take a stick. This one's like a length 240, 400. So one side, this is the rough side. You can start like this. And you see how it comes off a bit. And then you can use the, um, the, the smaller grain side for some additional smoothing of the surfaces. And there's a little uh, residue coming off. This is normal with this kind of uh, um, printed resin. Just a little bit powdery. Uh, you can just wipe it off and... Uh, yeah. So, you see, now we got a pretty, pretty nice surface. So, I'm just going to continue with the rest of the parts. Moving this into um, fast mode and I'll be right back with you when I'm done with all the parts. Now that all the parts are cleaned up, we can start with the assembly. I recommend painting the parts before the assembly, but for this video I just want to show you the assembly process. Let's start with the main body of the Mac. Notice that all parts are snap fit and don't require glue. However, if you are going for a fixed pose miniature, you can use super glue to fix the parts in place. Always make sure to push the parts together gently and carefully to avoid breaking pins or joints. The first articulated part is the canopy. Make sure to put it in position carefully and wiggle it in gently until it sits firmly in place. There's a small pin on the underside which allows you to lock the canopy in a closed position. Next is the attachment of the hip piece. The fit on some of these parts is quite tight, especially on ball joints, to allow for better articulation. Always use a rotating motion when putting ball joints together and slowly and gently push them in until they fit. When pushing joints in place, there will always be a little bit of surface material rubbing off, visible as fine powder. This is perfectly normal for this kind of 3D printed resin. Just make sure to blow it off and clean the surface before applying paint.
Let's continue with the legs assembly. As always, make sure to push the snap fit parts together gently and wiggle them in until they sit in place. Don't use too much force to avoid breaking parts. Although SLA 3D printing is a very sophisticated and exact technology, individual parts can always have some small inconsistencies. Here, for example, we need to trim the lower leg piece a little bit for the joint to be posable all the way to form a straight leg. Whenever you encounter this, don't forcefully push the joints all the way through, but closely observe where the obstruction occurs and trim those parts. Next up are the arms, same procedure as with the legs. Now we can add all those parts together. Again, make sure to assemble the ball joints by slowly and carefully pushing and wiggling them in. <clears throat> and here we go, our pocket mag is assembled and ready for action. One more thing left to do is to assemble the rocket launcher weapon pods. Just push the launcher doors in place and they're ready to go. The arms can be replaced with the weapon pods or mixed however you prefer. Also note that all the pocket necks have compatible joints, so you can mix and customize your pocket necks any which way you like. And here we have the complete collection of pocket necks, all painted and weathered. I recommend using an airbrush for painting, this is the best method to make sure every little detail is still visible after painting. For the most parts, the assembly is the same for all three pocket necks. However, some steps are different, but each process is thoroughly explained in the assembly instructions.
That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll all have fun assembling your pocket max. If you liked the video, please subscribe, leave a like and hit the bell notification button to support this channel. Thank you very much.